Hello, today we'll be looking at an IPU spring starter. In this video we'll be splitting this into three sections. First will be what comes in the box. Second will be fitting the starter and safety checks. Third will be unwinding and dismounting of the starter. In the box you'll find handle in two pieces, manual and check card in your folder, and the spring starter itself. Tools you'll need for fitting the starter will be either a 24mm spanner or a socket depending on how much space you've got. A rule to check the engagement and the distance between the pinion and the ring gear. And a 17mm spanner to fit the handle together. To fit the handle together, simply remove the bolt and washers from the one side. Get your other part of the handle, hold it together like that so the two holes are concentric and then reattach the bolt. And finally just use your 17mm spanner just to tighten it up and make sure it's secure. That's your handle complete. I'll now go through the different sections that make up the starter. At the front here, you have the front section also known as the nose cone where the pinion and drive assembly is housed. Then you've got your firing off switch and your reset switch here. You then have the centre housing of the body, which is where the spring pack is located. And then you have your rear housing, which, which houses your input shaft and input adapter. This is where the starter is wound. You also have your viewing windows on the side. These are important because it allows you to see whether the starter is wound or not. It's important to note at this stage some important safety warnings. The starter is designed to be operated under load, meaning it should never be wound or fired off while not attached to an engine. It should never be tested in a vice and should only ever be secured to the engine wound and fired off. Before installing your starter, it's important to check the distance between the pinion and the flywheel of the engine is correct. I'll now show you how to do this. Take a rule, get your starter and measure the distance from the mounting face of the flange to the top face of the pinion. You call this distance X. You then measure the distance between the mounting face of your engine pocket and the front face of the flywheel and call this distance Y. Take distance X away from distance Y and it should equal between three and five millimeters. If it doesn't, or if you need any other technical help, please contact IPU. I'll now fit the starter. What you should do is offer the starter up to the engine pocket, ensuring that the mounting face of the flange is flat up against the mounting face of the engine and then loosely insert the bolts by hand and then tighten them up with the spanner. Okay, once you've done that, is just use your spanner just to give it a final tighten and make sure it's secure. At this point, it's important to note your position of your input shaft here. If it's in the wrong position, this can be reorientated by removing the screws at the back, take it, removing the rear housing and then reorientating. It can, be, it can be housed in a total of six positions depending on your installation. 
It's also important to ensure that the body of the starter is not fouling against the engine at any point. You can do this either visually, or if it's very tight, get a sheet of paper and run it around the, the whole of the outside of the body to ensure it's not fouling on anything. If the pinion of your spring starter has a different number of teeth to your electric starter, don't worry, this can just be down to a spigot orientation. If you need any technical support, please contact IPU.